Alright, so I'm in Yosemite National Park and I just entered this morning. It's a Sunday morning. I slept in really late. I woke up between 5 and 6 and then forced myself to go back to sleep and didn't wake up till almost 10. But I wasn't in any hurry today. I'm not trying to finish the whole park today because it is a Sunday. It's going to be a lot more crowded than tomorrow, although every day at Yosemite is pretty crowded. But that aside, I decided to stay at a free spot near uh, the entrance off of 41, which I heard is one of the better entrances to come in of the three. And the first couple of spots that I look for or found were actually near 4x4 trails, and I really didn't want to hear all the engines running and, and motorbikes going um, at 7 a.m. in the morning, and it's really dusty. So I moved on to another one that was more like a campsite, but it was a free campsite not too far from the entrance and that one it reminds me why I don't stay at campsites. This one doesn't have rules because it's not regulated so you know a couple of people had their generators running all night uh, people were pretty loud past midnight none of that really bothers me too much it's just the whole principle of the whole thing um, I'm probably going to end up having to stay there tonight because I'm not going to finish Yosemite today. I, I want to take two or three days to do it and really take my time. And that's just so convenient. So unless I can find another one um, that's close by, I'll probably be staying back there because I know that there was room last night on a Saturday. There's definitely going to be room on a Sunday night. So I just got in through the entrance. I've got quite a few miles to go before I hit the, uh, the tunnel. And from there, I'm not sure. I'm going to try to drive every paved road that I can that doesn't require a shuttle bus and see how far I can get on uh, Tioga, Tioga Road or whatever that is, uh, which heads east, which I know is also closed uh, for another week or two. I'm going to stop at the visitor center and ask about that as well. So no real plan other than to check out as much as I can and take my time doing it. I don't care if it takes me uh, two days or three or four days. Um, I'm not sure what I'm doing after this, so uh, just see how it goes. So something that I've noticed already just a couple of miles in is that either fire or the pine beetle has just wiped out so much of the forest. And when you look across the valleys at the other mountain ranges, you can just see huge patches of either black or brown. And the fires all happen because of the drought, and from what I understand, the droughts also uh, keep the pine beetle larvae alive. And the freeze is what kills them, but if too many of them are kept alive, then this is the result. And as I understand it from reading in uh, Rocky Mountain National Forest, or park in uh, Colorado, uh, this is the worst that they've ever seen as far as the pine beetle goes. And even at the campsite where I was at, there were just tons and tons of trees that were either already cut down or marked to be cut down or yet to be marked to be cut down uh, because the pine beetle had just wiped out almost every pine tree in the area. Here's a good example of what I'm talking about. It's just like this everywhere. And if you look across, at the mountain range. I mean, spring's already been through this area, and that's not just because uh, of the winter. That's dead trees all over there. It's crazy.
So I'm at Glacier Point towards the end and it is a complete traffic jam so right up here I'm actually just gonna turn around and say the heck with it maybe I'll come back another day but uh, I got pictures of the dome which is straight up ahead the half dome from another angle I don't need other pictures that bad that I'm gonna wait in this for half an hour so I'm gonna do what this guy's doing up here and turn around so I was just at the one of the Glacier Point lookouts and just turn around towards the end but um, it's a long way in here and now I've got to you know you got to turn around and go all the way back to end up going through the tunnel road it was worth it in my opinion because the overlook as crowded as it was here and it's a madhouse um, it was the prettiest thing one of the prettiest things I've seen on this trip the waterfalls the half dome the uh, looking over the the valley into the other mountain range was just amazing the colors everything so I'm glad I did it but it's not one of those areas that you can go and sit and relax and enjoy it I mean there's just so much going on screaming kids people talking loudly jug jockeying for a position to get photos it's uh, pretty crazy but like I said one of the prettiest things I've seen on this trip so far so on my way to the Overlook, I changed my mind and decided I was going to go on the hike to see the Sentinel Dome or something like that. So that's 1.1 miles. I don't know if that's round trip or each way. So not too far, but uh, it's a nice day. It's cool, and I don't want to drive all the way back here just to do this short trail. So uh, I figured I'd do it now. So I downed a can of mini raviolis in the can, still cold. Um, staying true to my name, Simple Overlanding. So I'll see what this is all about. So even though this is just a short trail, I'm trying to get into practice of bringing necessities in case I decide to hike faster since I've already got caught without any water um, or minimal water, uh, thinking I was going to do like a mile or two hike and then ended up doing six miles. So I went ahead and pulled out some of my gear, put it all in my uh, backpack. So I've got some water in there. I've got my uh, satellite phone, a first aid kit, and a life straw. So when you follow this trail, you can see it on the other side there. When you loop around, you can actually walk up top of it. I'm out of breath because just ran uphill to get away from people talking. Didn't need to hear their stories, but it's pretty cool. It is 1.1 miles in, and then there's a view out that way at the Half Dome, which is actually a bit more impressive. So I'm going to check it out up here, and then I'll go look at the uh, other view. I think I'm going to be at Yosemite for 
quite a while because since I've got to the top of this dome, I've been up here for over an hour already, sitting in this spot for a good half an hour and don't plan on leaving anytime soon. So that's uh, what I'm looking at. I just had something to eat and just gonna enjoy that probably for a good half an hour at least. Maybe half an hour beyond when that group leaves. But uh, it is, I heard, one of the few places that you can get a complete panoramic 360 degree view of the park and it is awesome up here. So for only being about a mile walk up here, it's definitely worth it. Um, suggest it to anybody that comes into Yosemite, it's a must do. And uh, the views are just spectacular. You get a view of the waterfall that I'm looking at and then there's one on the other side as well. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna put my music back in and keep enjoying this. So on my way back from the dome, I saw a sign to go to Glacier Point. It was only another mile and a half. So since I couldn't drive to it, I decided I'm going to walk to it. And from there, I'm just going to take the the, uh, the road back. It's probably just as long, but it'd be a lot easier. It's already going on uh, 5 o'clock. And I'd rather just do that to get to my vehicle and then go find a camping spot for the night outside the park and come back tomorrow. So check out this dumb move. Guess who left their lights on? Even though he looked back to see if they were on and walked around the Jeep multiple times, still didn't catch it. So I come back, turn the key, and nothing. So let's hope that this works. And that is why carry these booster packs. Save my butt again. <laughs> 